Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this, welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be talking about consumer surplus, producer surplus, and deadweight loss. Before watching this video, make sure you understand what a price floor and price ceiling is. If you haven't seen my video on it yet, you can click on the card on the top right. It'll help you understand these concepts. That's going to be important for you to understand when we get to deadweight loss. Now in this video, we're going to go over consumer surplus, producer surplus, and deadweight loss. And we're going to be looking at some charts throughout it. Make sure you're following along with your notes. If you want, use my guided notes. You can find them in the description below. They'll go along with the video and help you understand everything. On the screen right now, you can see that I have a supply and demand chart for rubber ducks. We can see that our equilibrium is at $10. And at $10, I'll be selling six rubber ducks. Now, the first concept we're going to go into is consumer surplus. Consumer surplus is the difference between what people were willing to pay and then what they actually paid. Now, when we're just looking at our chart, we can see we have multiple consumers that value rubber ducks more than what the market's selling them for. So for example, right now, I can see someone's willing to pay $15 for this duck, but they're not going to have to. They'll only have to pay 10. Now at the same point, we also have people who are willing to pay less. Anyone that is below the equilibrium point on the demand, but they would not be factored into this. They are not valuing the product enough and there would be no sale there. At the same time too, we can also see our producer surplus. Now the producer surplus is the difference between what producers were willing to sell the product for and what they actually get to sell the product for. So for here, I can look at my supply line. When I'm looking at the supply line, I will take anything that is below the equilibrium and that's going to be where our producer surplus is. So these are companies that are willing to make the product and sell it for cheaper. What about producers that were willing to make more supply if the price was raised above the equilibrium? Well, they would not be factored into this. They're going to be up here on our supply and demand chart, but there's not going to be a demand. So we're not going to have a sale. So they would not be part of the producer surplus because no transaction will happen. So consumer surplus is the difference between what people were willing to pay and what they actually had to pay. So if I needed to find my total consumer surplus, I would find it in this triangle right here. Now for producer surplus, I'm going to do the same thing. However, I need to go from where my producers were willing to sell it for and what they actually got to sell it for. So we can see that our producer surplus is represented by a triangle here. Now on a test or quiz, you might get a question that asks for the total surplus. To find our total surplus, we're just going to take our consumer surplus and add it to our producer surplus. We can see it represented in the triangle here. We're taking the two total consumer and producer surpluses and combining them together. And that's producer and consumer surplus. Let's pretend for a minute that people really want these rubber ducks, but they don't like how high the price is. $10 is just too much. So people write to their congressmen and the government and eventually get the government to pass a price ceiling. Now the price ceiling, remember, goes below the equilibrium. This is going to be a new maximum amount that companies could sell rubber ducks for. And the new price ceiling is going to be set at $7. We can see here it's going to change our supply and demand graph then. Because the price has been lowered, our supply will go down. And because the price is down, our demand will go up. Now our new consumer surplus is going to be represented by this area here. And our producer surplus is going to be represented by the area here. Now these are our total consumer and our total producer surplus. Now the question though is, where is our deadweight loss? Deadweight loss is lost efficiency. Whenever we manipulate the market, we're going to have a loss of efficiency. And that's going to be our deadweight loss. While it might seem like a really good idea to try and lower prices artificially through government regulation, what's going to happen is we'll have a shortage. We're not going to be able to have enough rubber ducks for everyone. So in the end, people actually lose out. Now, our deadweight loss here is going to be represented by this area here. This is the lost efficiency, the lost area that we could have had if the market had not been changed and manipulated by the government. Now let's pretend one more time that companies eventually got upset about these price changes and they got the government to change them. And they got the government to put a price floor in effect. A price floor, remember, is going to be a minimum amount that companies can charge. So that will be above our equilibrium. I can see on my supply and demand chart over here, this new price floor is set at $12. Now our consumer surplus is going to be represented by the area here. Our producer surplus now is going to be represented by the area right here. 
And now we're gonna have a new deadweight loss. Remember, this is gonna be our loss efficiency. I can see my deadweight loss is represented by this area here. Now this is showing us what we could have had if the market again hadn't been manipulated. I hope by now you have a good understanding of how to find our consumer surplus, our producer surplus, our total surplus, and our deadweight loss. If you have any questions at all, make sure to post them in the comments below and I'll try to help you out. Thank you very much for watching this. Make sure to subscribe on your way out and check out some of my other videos on the channel. I'm Mr. Sin and until next time, I'll see you online.